Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I, um... I am so sorry. I got stuck in this meeting with Clarissa and Amalia about fund mismanagement, and they were drilling in the talking points for so long, and by the time I went to go look at the clock, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so, you're <sighs> Phil? Yes, Phil with the Y, short for Felicia. Again, I am so sorry. I hope you were getting work done while I was standing you up, at least. It's fine. And you're Thomas? Yeah, Thomas Tran. Hello, Thomas Tran. It is so quiet on your end. Normally, our office is really loud. That's why I ducked into one of these phone booths. Although, we're really crowded, so I was really lucky I could get one of these. Well, a lot of people have left for the day here. What time is it there? It's 5.46. New York City is three hours ahead of you guys. Oh shit, I just thought it was two hours for some reason. It's okay. I work late sometimes. Uh, can be hard to get stuff done here when everyone's around. There's a lot of chattering normally. You're so lucky. I've been watching you guys through the looking glass, and it seems like you guys have all the cool people there. Everyone's so young, and it just seems like everyone in my office has had a kid already, or is about to. The looking glass? Oh, you know that two-way spy camera thingy that's always on? I've never seen a company do that before. What's that about? When Clarissa launched Giving Tree, she wanted to find the best talent without being confined to the San Francisco job market. So she sent her husband Jerry to launch a New York office. Back when it was just the two of them, they'd have a video link up on at all times so they could spend time together while they were working. And they kept doing it as the company grew so that both offices would feel like part of one team. That's such an amazing story. They're like fully committed to this company. Yeah, it actually helped them attract a lot of invested attention at first. Uh, people love the whole power couple making it work against all lads angle. I can't believe they're married and live across the country from each other. And Clarissa's like six months pregnant. Yeah, they swear Clarissa having the baby won't affect day-to-day -day operations much. We'll see. I'm so excited to work with Clarissa more. There's a lot I can learn from her, obviously, but talk about having it all. And this is the first time I've ever worked for a company that has a positive mission. We help charities, but we're also a cool software company. Kind of the best of both worlds, you know? So were you ready for me to show you the client dashboard or? Oh, oh yeah, sure. <sighs> okay. Let me just get logged in again. My session got timed up. Oh, hey. <clears throat> Jerry, welcome back. Uh, are you heading out? Okay. Cool. I'll uh, push that code tonight. See you tomorrow. <clears throat> Sorry. It's okay. Right. Now, is everybody gone over there? Yep. Screen sharing now. Can you see the dashboard view? I can see it. Now that we're alone, what's the one thing you can tell me that no one else at this company will about succeeding here? Just work hard and be professional. Don't get on the wrong side of people. Well, that's a real insider scoop. I'm sure you'll be fine. You seem like someone the clients will trust, and as long as they stay happy, you'll be safe. And if clients aren't happy, I can just have you hack into their dashboards and put a virus on their computers. <laughs> sure, for now. For now? Oh, uh, um... Are you thinking about leaving? No, I, I don't know. Don't say anything to anybody. I don't want to do application development forever, and I'd like to move into security at some point but that's probably a ways out, but don't tell anyone I said that. Oh, I would never, but that's kind of a bummer. You're like the first person I've met here who hasn't secretly scared the shit out of me. Thanks, I guess. 
So anyway, this dashboard. Oh, right, right. <laughs> Sorry, you're trying to go home. Okay, I'm listening. I promise. Okay. Show me. Okay. Here's what you do. So, uh, you needed help with a password reset on the email. It's showing you as logged in right now. I don't really need help with a password reset right now. I just thought you could use a break. You haven't broken that staring contest to that computer of yours for like two hours now. Oh, uh, uh well, I was focusing. Uh, it's good to enter a flow state when you code. Sorry, did I break your concentration? It's fine. Where's everybody else? I saw you were alone at the office. You spend a lot of time looking at the video uplink. How can you not? The Looking Glass is like this mix of reality TV and a crazy social experiment. It's riveting. It's just a bunch of people sitting at their desks. Maybe on our end, but here's what I want to know. What is going on between Gavin and Ella? What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? You can't tell me that you spend seven hours a day in the room with them and you've never noticed a vibe, or they're constantly finding reasons to stop by each other's desks for long, lingering chats. Sometimes people who work together have to talk. Maybe, but the head of engineering and a salesperson don't have four reasons to be popping over to each other's desks. What are they always saying? I don't know. It'd be rude to listen in on their conversations. It's an open office. Surely you've overheard something. <sighs> Fine. Last week, I overheard them talking about their weekend plan and it sounded like they were going to the same concert, but not like it happened as a coincidence. What did they say? Okay, so Ella said <laughs> something like, uh, oh, you'll be at the Moon Beach <laughs> now too? That's so weird. And then Gavin said, oh, yeah, as it happens, I will be finding myself there on Saturday. Imagine that. <laughs> Oh my god! I was right! I knew it! <sighs> Were you the only one around? Yeah. I had my headphones on, so they must have thought I couldn't hear their conversation. Okay. This is very strong evidence. Your new job is to find out if they're currently secretly dating, or if they want to be secretly dating. My job is to coat the product. Sure, but wouldn't this garnish on your usual duties of employment make it a little more fun to show up to work every day? Work shouldn't have to be fun. It's, you know, work. Yeah, but it's also how we spend half our waking life most days, so it's reasonable to want it not to suck. So, do you at least enjoy your job even if you don't think work should be fun? I like coding, yeah, but some projects are way better than others. I have to do a lot of API integrations, which are boring, but I like taking a problem and solving it with this list of commands that just exist in digital space. It feels very controlled and satisfying. But you'd rather do security, you said? I just think it's more important and nobody cares about it. Even here at Giving Tree, Clarissa and Jerry are always delaying work on security buffers because they want me to keep building new features. But if we got hacked even once, that would be the end of the company. Charities would never trust us with their data again. But sure, why don't we spend all our time making the UI look sleeker? Wow, you're really passionate about this. I mean, well, who doesn't want to feel safe and protected, huh? So, uh, um, what do you like doing about customer support? I like helping people out, and I like the immediacy. 
someone has a problem, I have a solution, I fix it, it's all done and everyone's happy. I don't think I could have a job like yours where you work on something for so long before you have the satisfaction of actually completed something. Uh, that talk can be discouraging, sure, but the feeling of accomplishment is so much stronger when you finally do finish. Hmm. Hadn't thought about it that way. Nothing ventured, nothing gained and all that. Ugh. Clarissa's looking for me. I better go. So, I shouldn't interrupt you when you're knee-deep in a big coding problem from now on? Uh, yeah, no, I, um, no it, it's okay. Breaks are good. Good, because you have homework. Find out what's going on between Gavin and Ella. Message me if you find out anything and I'll whip my head on over to the looking glass. Talk to you soon. do this to other clients too, not just me, but it's so annoying. I introduce myself as Thomas. Everyone else calls me Thomas. My email address says Thomas, but he insists on calling me Tom. <laughs> and you're so far past the point of being able to correct him. I should have said something in my first week of work in here, not month 18. But when I started, it was just me, Jerry, and Gavin. And I couldn't do something that might cause tension. The hours were even longer back then than they are now. So what are you like outside of work? You live in New York City? That must be so exciting. Do you go out to clubs and bars much? Uh, I'm pretty boring. Most nights I just make the trek back to Queens from Brooklyn and uh, I watch TV and practice my bass or something. The giant upright kind? No. The uh, <laughs> electric kind that looks like a guitar. Rockstar? Are you in a band? Not since high school, and that was short-lived. The world didn't need the punk rock angst to sonic oatmeal. <laughs> I just like the noodle around now. Well, I hope that there's still recordings of this band of yours still out there. <laughs> Are you friends with any of your bandmates still? Uh, I see them once in a while. Uh, I spend more time with my parents, though. Do you live near them? Uh, yeah, we're four blocks apart from each other in Sunnyside. I actually just moved out of that place a few months ago. That's so sweet of you to stay with them for all this time. Were they really sad when you left? Well, uh, kind of. Honestly, they were the ones who wanted me to move out. They just thought I should be uh, building uh, an independent adult life now that I'm making more money. Wow. Hey, that's very normal in New York. It's an expensive city, and people who grow up here stay with their families longer. I'm not judging. It's just hard to imagine. I couldn't wait to leave home. I went to UCLA to get farther away, and then I came to San Francisco. So, you're not close with your family? Oh no, we are. We message most days and video chat sometimes. And me and my sister are pretty close. I don't know. It just felt natural to leave. I felt smothered by Texas and the world was bigger than that. Have you ever lived anywhere else? Never really wanted to. Well, you and your parents must be really close then. I'm their only child. You know, I spend a lot of time with them on the weekends when my dad isn't driving the 7. and I have dinner a couple nights a week there. Driving the 7 what? Oh, sorry. The number 7 subway line. My dad has been a driver for the Metropolitan Transportation Authority for 22 years. That's like the most New York City job you can have. Is he very good at it? Oh, he's amazing. When I was younger, he'd let me ride with him in the cab sometimes. And he even de-escalated a situation with a weapon once. Stopped a crazy homeless guy with a knife from hurting anybody. Everyone called him a hero after that. And that's not to say my ma isn't great too. She's amazing. She works at the Washington Laundromat down the street from me. 
I try not to take my laundry there whenever she's working because so I don't make it do it because that'd be feel weird to me, you know, to <laughs> make my bad do my laundry. <clears throat> so I, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do your parents do? Well, my mom doesn't work, and my dad's a gastroenterologist. Ah, a doctor. Of the guts. <laughs> Fancy. We were comfortable. He probably has the worst digestive system of any gastroenterologist around, though. Whenever we go out for Mexican food, he dumps jalapenos all over his plate and then spends half the night running off to the bathroom. <laughs> I'd hate to see what Chicken Vindaloo would do to him. So, is your family... What are you... Um, like, in terms of race, <laughs> for your parents... What do you mean? But uh, I take a more Pan-Asian perspective. We, we don't have to get into all this if you don't no, want to. No, I'm interested. I want to know. I just, I didn't know how to ask about any of it. I wasn't really any friends with any Asian people when I lived in Dallas. So, Pan-Asianism is about appreciating your own ethnic background, although the, while also embracing other East Asian and Southeast Asian cultures as part of a larger Asian American identity. You know, I think here in America, like, we feel really uh, compelled to turn away from our culture in order to fit in here, but then we end up denying this huge part of who we are. You know, we make up 6% of the U.S. population, and we're still growing, but the country thinks of us as this silent voting minority with no political priorities. And I think we'd get a lot more done if we all worked together and formed a stronger community. I can't believe I'm talking about this in the office. Everyone else can deal. I think it's really cool that you have a cultural identity. Why should you have to change who you are just because you're at work? Because you can rub somebody the wrong way and get fired. <laughs> you're not going to get fired. You're the hardest working person in that time zone. Uh, wait, isn't it like super late to be at the office? It must be oh, almost uh, seven. <sighs> you weren't going to have dinner with your parents tonight, were you? Uh, yeah, well... Thomas, oh my god, stop talking to me and get out of here. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going. <laughs> but let's talk more about this later, okay? Seriously. Okay, if you want to. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Bye, Thomas. Mm. You were right about this, Bon Bo Who. I'm in heaven. Yeah, see, so people like Boom Ba Way <laughs> when they just try it. Vietnamese food isn't all pho and banh mi sandwiches. <laughs> but it's a revelation. I really needed this. Thank God Clarissa is at a Women in Leadership Summit today. It's so much less stressful when she's not around. Yeah, I, um, I saw her reaming you out on the looking glass yesterday. What was that about? Mm. She thought I bungled a response to one of our charity partners. I told them that we could not track employee click behavior because that's what Gavin told me last week. But apparently I shouldn't have told them no to anything. So now, Clarissa has me sending all of my emails to her to get approved before I can send them to any clients. That seems inefficient. Exactly. And it's like, could you have any less faith in me as an employee? Ugh. My ego is in shambles. Try not to let it get you down. The clients obviously enjoy talking to you. Remember when the bail fund manager told you that your weak growth number check-in meetings were the highlight of his week? Thomas, what am I going to do when you're not here to distract me from my misery with these late lunch slash early dinners? I'm going to be inconsolable when you quit. Well, 
and there's always Gavin and Ella to spectate on. Mm. Their love story will be my life raft in the stormy sea of turmoil. <sighs> Any developments there? Uh, nothing much. They seem to leave within five minutes of each other most days, but you probably already noticed that. I just got to know more. There must really be something there for them to risk pissing off Clarissa, especially when there's like 10 million other people they can be dating in New York City. Well, technically, that's more than the population of all five boroughs. Thomas, but if you think quit the whole willfully missing the point. What's the dating scene like there anyway? Uh, oh, I, um, it's, um, Intimidating is the word I use. People are really obsessed with their careers and they want dating to be quick and efficient. If they don't like you in the first couple dates, they'll move on to someone better. To say nothing of being an Asian man on the dating apps. Thomas, you're cute. I'm sure you did just fine. San Francisco is bleak. It's all silver fox venture capitalists and nerdy tech weirdos. You're lucky if they can squeeze you in for a coffee between meetings. Hey, as a fellow nerdy tech weirdo, I take offense at that betrayal. Not guys like you. I mean guys who think that their boutique energy drinks are gonna save the world. So, uh, 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 so that's why you're not seeing anybody? I guess so. I never date anybody for long, but it's always been that way. That would suggest it's not the energy drink dudes that are stopping you. Well, maybe. Jeez, you sound like my sister Lexi. I just don't like to be tied down is all. I love meeting people and getting to know them and seeing how they tick. I love that feeling when you're in that stage of dating where your stomach free falls a little when you see them coming towards you from across the street. But it never stays that way. You know, eventually they start pushing for more and you get dragged to office Christmas parties or to the theater with their roommates and you start to sink into things. You get stuck. I mean, everybody says that your partner should be the person that you could be yourself with, but at the beginning of a relationship, I'm so busy trying to get the other person to like me that when it comes time to being myself, I don't even know how to do that. The thought of it just makes me want to squirm away, but uh, that must seem pretty pathetic to you. How would that be pathetic to me? I mean, you still go on dates with people. Why don't you? Was it because you were living with your parents before? Uh, kind of. Not really. No. It's just scary. It seems easier to just opt out of the whole system. So you never want that connection with someone? If I picture the end product of a functional relationship, then sure, I want it. But when I start thinking about all the work it takes to get there, the unanswered messages, the awkward dates and vulnerable conversations, it just seems like too much to handle, so I just shut down. And that's when I'm not paralyzed by wondering whether people even think of me as a viable option, or if I'm even capable of exposing myself to the risk of being deeply wounded by another person. But I definitely want that end result with the right person, like what my parents have. You know, I'd like to have someone to tell my problems to, to take care of, who will also take care of me, to trust and grow with. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you'll find the right person, Thomas. I've got to go. Um, I'll see you later. Okay, well, I, uh... <sighs> it was crazy! Everybody's just sitting around there working, and Clarissa's on the phone with the director of a huge mutual aid fund, and then I hear this dripping sound. I look over, and it's very clear that her water just broke, and we're all just standing around staring at each other.
frozen. Clarissa stays on the phone for 10 more minutes before getting off the call and asking Amalia to take her to the hospital. We didn't even notice anything weird was going on until you started helping her out the door. God, everybody was just sitting around like normal. Is Jerry heading there now? Yeah, he went straight to the airport. Everyone else left pretty soon after to work from home. Same here. Clarissa told me to hold down the fort, although there's not very much to hold down. What are you still doing there if everyone's gone home already? Well, as it happens, I have a surprise for you, and now seems like the perfect time to present it. Tell me! Tell me now! Ugh, I wish every day was this exciting! Okay, okay. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. Check out chat thread. Oh. My. God. Holy shit! You did it! This is incredible. How did you get it? Well, a couple of days ago, I was went out to grab lunch, and I was cutting back through Trinity Park when I saw Gavin and Ella walking ahead of me. I stayed close and followed behind for a couple of minutes, and then, when I saw them start to nuzzle up to each other, I got out my phone and... And you captured it! Oh, a kiss! Oh, this proves it! See, I told you. I gotta give it to you. You were right. This is the best day ever. And I haven't even told you my news yet. Well, there's no way anything you say is gonna top this, but you're welcome to try. Okay, so I had this meeting with Clarissa today before the whole going into labor situation happened, and I was talking about how much I hear our 501c3 clients say that the dashboard doesn't really work for them, and I mentioned some different ideas I had on how to fix it. Clarissa actually listened, which was a surprise of its own, and then she said I should work with Jerry and Gavin on a new prototype and that she was going to book me a flight to the New York office. Which means I'd be in New York where you are. We could meet. Say something, Thomas. Right, right, sorry. That, that's amazing. I kind of thought you'd be more excited. I am, I am. I just, wow. This is so, this is a lot to take in. It's exciting and scary and a lot of other things that I can't summon the words for right now because my brain seems to have stopped working for some reason. Okay, well, I can't wait to see you. And I guess, like, to meet you. But that seems like the wrong word when I feel like I already know you. Wow. This is so much to plan for. There's so many places you gotta eat at. I'm gonna need to make a list and a schedule. Hear, hear me out. But right by the office is the New York Transit Museum, which is my favorite museum in the whole city. And they've got all these vintage subway cars dating back to the early 1900s. And one of them has wicker seats. That all sounds great. But I'm mostly just excited to look at you in real life and not working on a screen. I can actually see you, and touch you, and be in the same time zone as you. Uh, uh, touch me? Oh, you know what I mean, like, hug you, and, and, and see if it feels like it feels now. Like there's this chemistry. I know what feeling you're talking about. And you feel it too? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it would be nice to see where it goes. I hope it goes somewhere. <laughs> Me too. Wow, well, this has been quite a day. Uh, lots to think about. Are you going to go home now? Uh, I may walk around the city for a while. I have a lot of energy all of a sudden. I can think about places where I can take you, and places you want to go to, of course. Museums and attractions and stuff. I'll make you a list of cool things and you can rank them. 
Sounds good. I'll talk to you soon, Thomas. Bye, Phil. Two weeks! Two weeks. That's not maternity leave. That's a maternity vacation. Uh, I was really hoping we'd have longer without them around. At least Jerry is still in San Francisco until next week. Sure. <laughs> Lucky for you. You haven't cried in the bathroom today already. What, what happened, Phil? Ugh, it's stupid. So, you know how one of my favorite clients is the first Page Foundation, and their director really likes me and sent an email to Clarissa telling me so? Well, they just renewed their package with us, and Clarissa is still obsessed with having the final say on everything a client sees. So she revised and approved their contract, even though she was supposed to be on maternity leave. So she sends it back to me, and I pass it along, everything seems fine. And then I receive an email from Kimberly saying that we messed up a clause, and now they're in non-compliance with their employees and could get sued. Uh. It's really bad news. So. I go to Clarissa and ask her how to proceed, whether we should contact everyone at the foundation with an apology or discount part of their services, just how we can make it right. And Clarissa says, tell them you attached the wrong email, the wrong draft of the contract by mistake. Clarissa wanted you to take the fall for it. And I had to do it. It was that or quit on the spot, basically, which I thought about for a half second before I remembered the New York trip. I'm sorry she did that to you. It felt terrible to damage my own reputation and tell Kimberly something that wasn't true. And she was furious. She wrote me back saying that I should take my job more seriously when it affects underprivileged kids. It sucked. And Clarissa just makes me feel so dumb and so incompetent at everything. You're not the first person to have your position, you know. The woman who used to do your job left because Clarissa kept criticizing her in front of the entire company. She'd even unmute the looking glass so that our office could hear it. So you're pretty strong for even staying on the job. But that's awful that everyone's just putting up with this. Why do we... Yes, this is Phil Corey over at The Giving Tree. I just wanted to give you a call and see if we're still growing your funds in every way we can. <sighs> see, Clarissa's not stupid, so she must know that I'm pissed at her. She keeps looking in to see what I'm doing. Why do we keep working here? Because it's a job. Sometimes that's just how jobs are. Well, they shouldn't be. I wish I was there. I wish you were here too. But just think, seven weeks, three days. Seven weeks, three days. Just seven weeks and three days, and then all the things I can do to you. The, uh, things? Uh, uh, what kind of things? Well, I would love to tell you all about them in scintillating detail, but I'm not interested in Clarissa overhearing me. Well, you could always uh, call me at home and tell me. I could do that, couldn't I? Well, if you were at home, that is. Wouldn't work so well if you were going to hang around the office all night. Well, would you look at the time? <laughs> I think I should be getting out of here. I'll talk to you later, Phil. Bye, Thomas. Talk to you soon. Very soon. Hey, Phil. How was your weekend? Oh, it was excellent. I've had several really excellent weekends recently, as it happens. <laughs> Did you get up to much? I stayed busy. Very busy. <laughs> <laughs> it
It's kind of weird, isn't it? You know, the sex. If you could call it sex anyway. I mean, I call it sex. <laughs> <laughs> sure feels like it. Well, actually, it feels way more intimate than any I've had before. I feel more present, weirdly. What's... What's it normally like for you? Oh, it's, uh, fun, obviously. I don't know, I guess it feels kind of like a performance. You're always trying to figure out what the other person wants, and you want to enjoy yourself but not take too much. I can never get out of my own head, and there's always too many competing thoughts. I guess I get too out of my head. Like, when I start to think about how to ask for what I want or what I like, it just seems too vulnerable. There's nowhere to hide. Yeah, you feel so naked. Well, you are <laughs> naked. Well, sure, but emotionally, it's scary. Although also exhilarating when you actually do it. Like you're skydiving naked. <laughs> yeah, if you want to create that unpleasant image, sure. I wonder what it'll be like when we see each other, when it's real. It's real now. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean real. <laughs> I meant in person. Well, has to be even better, right? I hope so. We'll know four weeks from today. <laughs> that first day in the office, I'm not going to be able to get any work done. The tension's going to be unbearable. <laughs> You say it like it's possible to get any work done now. I don't think time has ever moved so slowly, which is annoying because I've never wanted to wish four weeks of my life away so quickly. Yeah, but this part is important too. Uh, these days are also a part of the story. I know, I know. I know it's still valuable time. Even though everything at work, outside of talking to you, is slow-burning misery. You know, she won't even let me take calls with the large charities alone anymore. She's always interrupting and undercutting me on the phone. How does she even have the time? The baby probably has to make time, find an open slot in the schedule just to get its diaper changed. <laughs> For real. Imagine being that kid. You'd be such an emotional wreck as an adult. <laughs> oh gosh, I should probably get back before Clarissa suspects I've been secretly doing my job for five minutes without her full scrutiny. I should get back to it too, I guess. But I'll see you on the looking glass so it's not so bad. Indeed you will. And in four weeks. Four weeks! <laughs>
that, that, that tree and the little kid have a toxic relationship, just like we do with this company. The, what are we doing here? Why doesn't anybody leave? I guess because most of them have kids to feed. I think that's why a lot of people stay at their jobs. But we don't. And what about you, Thomas? Whenever I met you, you had one foot out the door. You had dreams and plans. What happened to that? You happened to that. And look, this is a setback, sure, a big one. But Clarissa has changed her mind before whenever it helped the company. One time, I found a bug in the system that was vulnerable to remote exploits by hackers, and she let me drop everything in order to fix it, even though we had a feature rollout happening two days later. So maybe she'll realize how, just how much they need you to come and help. And also, she has a baby, so maybe she's not thinking straight. I bet if we just kept working a little harder for a few more months, she'll change her mind. And things are good now, like we said. You know, we can just keep going for a little while longer, and... I... I can come anyway. What? what? I can come anyway. I can come to New York on my own. It's not like Clarissa owns the airlines or rules the earth like she thinks she does. She doesn't control us outside these walls. I could get on a plane tomorrow. I, I could get on a plane right now. Thomas, come on, disable your firewall. What are you thinking? I mean, if Clarissa really does believe you're not doing well in your position, she won't want you to take a vacation. It could put your job at risk. So what? She can fire me. I don't care. You should care. How can you be so careless about your job? Because it sucks, Thomas. Were you not here for the part where I said how much I hate it? It's a job, Phil. Most people hate their jobs all the time, and they don't even have someone else to get through it with like we do. And besides, plane tickets are expensive, especially if you're about to be unemployed. That's a big deal. It's fine. I have the money. Don't worry about that. Is this coming from something else? Do you... Do you not want to meet me? Uh, of course I want to meet you. I've been dying to see you and touch you and find out what your hair smells like for months. Do you think I'd be putting my job in jeopardy if I didn't want us to meet? I've gotten so behind on all my projects lately because I can only work for three hours a day. Once you come into the office and I can see you, I don't get anything done because I can't stop staring at you through the looking glass. And yesterday, Cherry said to me, Hey, Tom, is everything okay? Do you need help on your projects? You seem off lately. The whole world knows I'm a bad case now. But yes, of course I want to meet you. Do you think Clarissa canceled my trip because she knew? What are you talking about? What if she knew what we feel about each other and that's why she canceled it? How would she know? Well, for one thing, someone could have noticed how we act. It's not like Gavin and Ella were very sneaky. It took me about three hours to clock in what was happening with them. And maybe they look at our chat messages. There's some pretty incriminating stuff in there. I mean, we make this technology and sell it to other companies. Why wouldn't Clarissa use it to track us? Jerry could be using it and looking at it without telling you. I can't believe I was this stupid. Security is supposed to be my dream job and I didn't see this coming. I've been so careful my whole life. What was I thinking? It's okay, Thomas. We'll figure it out. No, no, no. You don't know and... that. And maybe it'll be okay for you, but not for me. I still help my parents out with their rent, and their neighborhood keeps gentrifying, and they're going to get priced out and have to leave if I'm not chipping in. I don't have some rich doctor dad to bail me out if I lose my job. 
Wow, Thomas. Phil, come on, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't I, mean that. I'm gonna go. I should let you calm down if you're gonna be like no, this. No, 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 do not just disappear because this is hard for you. You get to just t switch me off and disappear because I'm not there to stop you? Fine. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I get why this scares you. I can tell that you feel like you're walking on a tightrope without a safety net under you, and that if the rope wobbles even a little, you're gonna plunge to the ground. But you can make every right choice and still not be happy. I see that in my parents sometimes. Talking, sitting in their perfect life, in their perfect house, going through the motions of being a perfect couple, but not really enjoying where all those good decisions have gotten them. We've let these jobs control us for a long time because we thought if we worked hard enough, we'd get something we'd want, but we didn't. Thomas, I think that you're gonna find this hard to believe, but you deserve to be happy. And nobody can fight for your happiness as much as you can. So you have to take it. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Book the flight. So you're all packed? Yes, even though this is the earliest I've ever packed for a flight, how do you know what clothes you're going to want on the trip if you don't wait until the morning you leave? <laughs> you check the weather of your destination and plan ahead. So you definitely packed your cell phone charger? Yes, Thomas. Okay, okay. Uh, the itinerary's ready. We have tickets to the New York Transit Museum. Our noodle tour of Flushing has been mapped. Uh, the dinner reservation with Gavin and Ella has been made. Re I have resigned myself to the fact that I will be going to a nightclub. <laughs> My days off have been approved. Did uh, Clarissa yeah. say anything about the fact that you and I asked for the same week off? <laughs> well, when she approved the PTO request, all she wrote was, Have fun! <laughs> with a period at the end. Of course she did! She told me that we should have a conversation about my future with the company when I get back. Oh, shit, I wonder that, what that means. I'm not worried about it. What happens will happen. How are you feeling about everything? I'm still kind of nervous, but mostly just excited. I want to enjoy it, so I'm not letting myself worry too much. Good! That's progress! And you've got the world's most robust to-do list to anchor you. It helps. <laughs> There's something I still need to do, though. Phil, do you think it's possible to, uh, uh, yeah, to love someone you've never met in person? Well, it's happened plenty before in human history, right? Like. Monarchs have arranged marriages, and people fall in love in World of Warcraft and whatnot. Sure. But if the question is whether I could love someone I've never met, or whether I do, I mean, well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I love you, Thomas. I... I know I do. And it's confusing. Of course it is. We don't know exactly what it means or what's gonna happen, but <laughs> it does feel like we did everything backwards, but that maybe that's why it worked. <laughs> All we could do was talk and watch each other and sit at desks and have really, really fun video chat sex. <laughs> Somehow that was enough. 
We can hide who we really are from each other. I love you too, Phil. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> okay, my list is done. <laughs> Thomas, was telling me you left me on your to-do list? You'll never know, but I'm ready now. <laughs> me too. <laughs> really ready. So, I'll see you tomorrow? Tomorrow. <laughs> Alright, well, next time I look at you, it won't be through a screen! <laughs>